Joining me right now is Dr. Ladi Balakefi MNI. She's the acting director of the Monetary Policy Department at the Central Bank of Nigeria. Of course, uh, that department is, you know, heavily involved in putting all that together. So, good morning, ma'am, and thank you for joining us, doctor. Thank you. Welcome mm -hmm. to the show for mm -hmm. the first time. Yes, for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, and I hope it won't be the last. You know, we'll continue to, to see you. Now, let's get to uh, the nitty gritty. Uh, yesterday, a lot of people have read different um, uh, analysis, listened to different people. I also spoke to some professors yesterday, and they were like, oh, Nancy, this is just so huge. The country is still really, you know, the, the CBN would have, MPC would have allowed the previous uh, rate hike uh, of 6% to permit through and all of that. Why did the MPC decide to raise interest rates again? Mm -hmm. And not just even raising interest rates again, but by raising it by 150 basis, basis points, point. making 7.5% mm -hmm. Uh, uh, rise hmm. since February. Okay. Um, thank you for always um, believing in us <laughs> because you always call us to explain what um, we are doing what and why doing. We, we, d we, we do what we do. So um, I'll quickly say the, the reasons why we, we raised we, the interest rate is principally to impact on, on um, money supply you know, to rein in inflation. As you know, inflation has um, gone up to 33.69%. Um, mm. uh, and um, you know it's not good for the economy. And um, inflation is a monetary phenomenon. We can take, we know in Nigeria we have structural rigidities uh, as well. But al also the tools that are within the purview of the central bank that we can use is to manage liquidity and um, MPR the monetary policy rate is happens to be one of the tools our primary tool and um, as you know the current management is focusing on price stability which is our primary mandate and in doing that we have to ensure that inflation is at a level that um, will not distort the equilibrium in the macroeconomic environment. Mm. The other question should be around mm. why, why because there's this, there seems to also be a lag effect, yes. as it were. Those last uh, uh, rate MPC. hikes, there's MPC, yeah. at least cumulatively we saw 6% before yeah. uh, yesterday. And there's a school of thought that the transmission mechanism, the rate sensitivity is slow in the country in terms of the pastoral yeah. of, of, of rates. And the MPC decided again to raise it. You know, so why did, didn't the MPC look at, let's allow this to permeate through? <laughs> you understand? Mm. Because I, even uh, reading again what the governor of the central bank said uh, yesterday, he said that the MPC was, you know, in between, should we wait for the rate hikes to permeate mm. that we've done, or should we uh, increase it? So mm. tell me, give me... Okay. What happened behind closed doors? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, well, what happened behind mm -hmm. closed doors is now open. Open. <laughs> yes. So the rate increase actually aims to improve the real interest rate in the economy. That's mm -hmm. the main reason behind it. The real, real policy rate is now narrowed to minus 7.44% from minus 8.45%. Mm -hmm. And I'll quickly tell you, if you look at um, month on month, we've made some gains from our rate, previous rate hikes. Um, they, there's been headline inflation for the second consecutive month slowed down, month on month, um, from 2.29% in April. F it, it narrowed down to 2.29% in April, from 3.02% in March, and largely driven by food inflation. The decline was mostly food although moderate, but it is gains from our policy. We see it as part of the but still results. It's just that the rate of rise is not that much. That's what it is, actually. Yes. It's still high, but, but it's not... It's moderate. It's, high. it's not rising, rising as... Rising at, at an accelerated mm. rate. And then even food inflation decreased to 2.50% in April month and month from 3.62% in March month and month. And then core inflation also decreased to 
percent in April from 2024, uh, from 28 uh, to 8.34 percent in the preceding month. And as we are trying to curb inflation, other things are happening in the economy that are outside our purview. The fiscal side, they are spending, there's rate hikes in um, energy, which is not within our control. We have also structural rigidities, such as the insecurity in the country. So what we can use are our tools. And that's why, and we are seeing slight um, 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 gains, although not where we would like, like to, to be. be. But we believe that this increase that we did will, in the long run, be beneficial to, for the economy. Because the average person, even on the streets, and um, even listening to some analysis will be like, why is inflation still stubbornly high? You've given me, you've alluded to it a bit, I heard mm. you, insecurity, some of the uh, things that are not within the central bank's control. Mm. But that brings me also to the question of, can your tools still not control inflation? If part of the uh, issue is that a lot of factors are not within your control. And if you're still raising rate, and we're still seeing that inflation is still stubbornly high, though there's been some kind of moderation month mm. on month. Mm. And uh, I was speaking with a guest last week as a prof, Professor Kennedy, and you know, it was a school of economics here on my show mm -hmm. <laughs> last week, where he was telling me, okay, this is month on month moderation, mm. this and this. I, I also asked him the question, if we take all that, it should also add up. Yeah. We should see it add up to headline inflation. So just speak to me about perhaps why it's still stubbornly high. Okay, you know. it's, it's still stubbornly high because um, we, we've had excess liquidity in the system. We still have it. We have um, currency in circulation outside the bank, which is high. Um, and that brings me to why we actually raised the, the NPR rate. So we also have ways and means, which everybody knows which is, is still out there, you know. There's too much liquidity in the system. So the bank w is trying, we have a liquidity management committee. We sit daily to look at the liquidity positions in the bank and also um, outside to see what tools we can use to apply to bring down these rates. And also, I'll quickly say this to you, that we're strengthening the coordination between us and the fiscal authorities. Mm more than okay. what we had before. We're making it more structured now so that we will know when they are spending, we will know what tools to apply to mop up. So, but you know, um, as for, th that's what we're doing now to, to try and bring down the, the inflation. Aside from our tools, we will need the fiscal authorities to, to reduce spending and they are very willing to listen to us. So that's why the collaboration now is very key and we are on the process of making very firm structure that we can say will be reliable. Mm. I wonder what that kind of trade-off would be uh, because I understand the, the, uh, the challenge that the monetary policy uh, authority is facing. The fiscal side too, if you're advising the fiscal side to reduce spending. We actually need spending mm. in the economy, yeah. <laughs> you know, because uh, we need to be stimulated. Mm -hmm. You know, demand needs to be stimulated. We've seen mm -hmm. a lot of strangulation mm -hmm. uh, 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 lately. So I'm wondering what that kind of trade-off will be. Uh, but, but the next question will be around, will your monetary policy tools really solve this problem? Because the way it's seeming now is that you must do your job yes. as central bank. Mm -hmm. You must do your job. You must meet uh, once in two months. Mm -hmm. You must take a decision on rates. So you must do your job. Mm -hmm. So will your tools now solve uh, the problem? Our tools. When it's structurally, uh, 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 when we have structural issues. Yes. Our tools will solve the problem to the extent mm -hmm. that it can solve it. Okay. But as I said, we will need collaboration with the fiscal authorities and that's what we are looking forward to that handshake must be strong and firm and structured once we get that then we can answer you assert assert assertively mm -hmm. but however to the extent that our tools can go I it will work and um, that's what we are we are hinging our bet on 
And as I told you earlier, we've seen some gains. And if we have other sectors of the economy coming in to work with us, it will, it will, will get better results. Do you at the MPC think about the impact of your decisions on businesses, um, on micro, small businesses, also on even businesses? That's mm -hmm. one. The second question will be about, because your rates will make banks also reprice their loans. Yes. Definitely. As it were, so the cost of funds will also be high. Yeah. Uh, for people that have borrowed uh, monies from banks, they mm -hmm. may be getting emails and calls from their account officers that, oh, mm -hmm. madam, the loan interest has has changed. Mm -hmm. So how do you factor all of this into your decisions at the MPC? And if you look at it, that would also strangulate people yeah. and, and businesses. So what kind of considerations are you? all uh, given uh, to this aspect when you are meeting? Okay, so um, one of the biggest challenge that central banks face is taking decisions on trade-offs. Mm -hmm. You trade off growth for inflation yeah. or you trade off inflation for growth. But you see the primary thing that ties the economy together is if you bring down inflation, it will impact on all this. So if inflation is reined in, it will have a significant impact on growth. If you go to the market now, everybody will tell you prices of good. Mm. It's high. It's high. Prices. What do I is Inflation. So bring down inflation, the prices of these goods will go down. And you have stability in the long run. Mm. That's why we are focusing on that stability. For now, at a point in time, in every economy, you will need to do your cost-benefit analysis and determine when you should now start saying, okay, let's slow down a little with the growth to rein in inflation. Because if inflation goes higher than it should be, there is a threshold that will be inimical to growth. So when, once you reach that threshold, then you start backtracking to now trade off the growth albeit temporarily, so that you can focus on reining in inflation f to stabilize the macroeconomic environment, and then growth will, will, will progress. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm forced to ask this question, Ralph. The inflation we're having, I, I heard you clearly earlier when you said, is money related? Mm. Is it, where, is it in is addition to other things. OK, in addition to other yeah. things. Which one weighs more? Because our inflation, is it monetary inflation? Mm. It, it is monetary because from the day we the, we have data that tells gives us a global a whole picture. Mm -hmm. If we, we have a huge informal sector, if we can bring in the currency outside the bank, if we can bring it in, we will see that we are once we reduce. Okay, so what happens is when there is excess liquidity mm -hmm. in in our economy mm -hmm. currently. We find that people have the ability to go and buy dollar with this money. And when they go and buy dollar, we have what we call imported inflation. Mm -hmm. that, thank you for saying that, because that was actually my next question. And yes. that was why I asked that question. Yes. So there, there is a pass-through mm -hmm. effect. So if we can manage our liquidity in the system to make this Naira less available for people to use, to go and attack the foreign exchange market. That's one arm. We, we will we'll get in stride because there is a strong correlation between our exchange rate, the value of our, of our, exchange, of our currency vis-a-vis -vis the dollar, and, and our markets here in Nigeria. So once we can get that, we can stabilize that, we will, we will see some progress. Uh, I, you all in the MPC, including the governor, how worried are you all? How concerned are you all about the situation that Nigerians are facing right now? And I'm asking that question vis-a-vis, -vis, I mentioned it was earlier this week, I was on the market last week or two weeks, was it last week? Just a few days ago on the weekend. And you know, people did not even allow me pass. I'm an Amnasi, you know they tell these people waiting to happen with their mm. sofa, we are choking. So are you all at the central bank aware about the sufferings of the people, about you know how to balance how to work to balance this because inflation really is the thief mm -hmm. as it were how to work because it seems that 
people are getting impatient mm. right now. Our patient capital is really running out. Mm. People are really choking. So how concerned are you all at the Apex Bank? How concerned you all have interface with your master, <laughs> Governor Cardoso, perhaps almost every day. How concerned, what are the kind of discussions that go on in that building about having, um, you know, creating a good macroeconomic environment from your monetary policy side? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are very concerned. And the current management is very strong on stakeholders' engagement. Okay. And you're going to see more of that going forward. We're going to engage with um, different sectors, even market women, the SMEs, to, to get a feel of what's happening there. Not that we don't know what's mm -hmm. happening there currently. Before we take these decisions, we have surveys market sentiments, consumer surveys, firms. We have from MBS, there's also the ones we do ourselves. There's also survey that we get from private sector. So we, we put all this together, we piece them together. That's what, how we come up with our policies. We, don't, we just don't come up with policies like that from the air. We look at the dom domestic environment, we look at the fiscal sector, we look at the uh, balance of payment positions, and then we look at also the global economy because we are in a in we are part of the global economy. So whatever happens in the U.S. will have an impact in Nigeria. So we take a global look at all these things, both domestic and global, and that gives us a, b a broader picture. Mm -hmm. We are applying our tools like the as much as we can to rein in inflation, and we think that is the primary thing. But there is a lag effect before you start getting the results. And um, what I'll say is that um, people should just be patient. That, that our patient, don't they? It's not, <laughs> no, no, no. It's not elastic anymore. You know, it's not... Um, it's losing its elasticity. No, no, no. It won't <laughs> lose it. Because <laughs> once inflation comes down, the market will stabilize. That's, and that's what we're focusing on. That's our goal, ultimately. I needed to ask that question mm -hmm. because, you know, let me know that as you people are wearing your suits <laughs> in that building, if you are We also of go to the market, <laughs> and we go to the same market, market that, that you go, go to. to. So we, f we feel the pains. We have relatives that go to these markets. So we take a holistic view. We don't just look at um, um, one side of the economy. We look at the whole sector. And as I said earlier, we are at the verge of, of transiting to inflation targeting. Mm -hmm. We want the bank to be more transparent. We'll be communicating more to the public. We want the bank to be more credible because if the central bank is not transparent and it lacks credibility, the citizens will not believe in us, neither will the international investors that we so much need for them to bring in their inflows. So we are very mindful of that. And very soon, you will start seeing the CBN in engaging people, stakeholder engagements. OK. Yeah. So I think we should leave it at that, and we mm -hmm. should take this away from you in yeah. terms of we will now see a, uh, you know, a, a pro-people central bank, yes. as it were, because there's this notion that oh, central bankers don't talk too much. They don't do this. I'm like, do you know how many times I listen to Jerome Powell? Do you know how many times yeah. that Christine Lagarde speaks? Mm -hmm. You know, let alone a central bank of the developing economy. The majority of us don't even understand what you people do. So you we, need we are actually pro-people. Mm -hmm. And I must tell you quickly that um, the business survey, you're talking about SMEs mm -hmm. and the business survey, the sentiments we got is that the, the firms are optimistic. They are actually optimistic because it is to their own benefit for us to rein in inflation. If prices are too high, nobody will buy their goods. You know? So we are pro-people. I'm going to leave this place reassuring the audience, audience. that we are pro-people and they will be seeing more engagement from the management of the bank with stakeholders of different categories and different sectors of All the right. economy. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Balakefi.